Flight has been a part of many of our lives, especially when it comes to travel. A lot of people like to debate whether Santos Dumont of Brazil or the Wright brothers of North Carolina were the ones who invented flight. Well, a lot of people forget that in the 1800s, a lot of aeronauting through hot air balloons led to scientific discoveries and inventions in flight. Now, John Wise in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, back in those days, did a lot of aeronauting and made a lot of those scientific discoveries and inventions. And in this series of videos, we're going to be talking about those inventions and his early life all the way up to his mysterious disappearance. John was born on February 24th, 1808, to his parents William and Mary Trey Weiss, which later changed to the surname Wise, right near Mustard Park where he lived most of his life in Lancaster, where there is a memorial for his history in the area. He was first known as being an apprentice carpenter at the age of 16, eventually briefly being a piano maker at the age of 21. His true love though was for ballooning which came at the age of 14. Seeing many small ones that would be in the air momentarily at carnivals and reading articles about balloons, which he would then at some point start his experimenting with balloons. One legend is told that one of his first experiments was with a cat. He went to his church taking the cat and going up on the steeple to then put a homemade parachute on the cat. Throwing the cat off the steeple having the parachute deploy and the cat landing safely without a scratch. In his first year of his fascination of balloons, he decided to make his own small balloon, which was most likely homemade and was successful in launching off, though ended in a mess. The balloon fell and it landed on a roof of a house in the center of Lancaster, setting it on fire. John's first actual hot air balloon was on May 2nd, 1835, when he was about 27 years old. He made the ascent in Philadelphia, which was a successful flight in the city. With that, it had him excited and inspired to do more flights. But this flight would be the last successful one for a while because the next couple of ones took some bad turns. His second ascent happened to be more local in Lebanon County, PA on Independence Day, a couple months after his first. He was flying the balloon when he was opening up the valve on the top of it and lost control. This caused the balloon to burst. The balloon then fell back down to earth, but John descended in the balloon without any injury at all. Then he wouldn't do another flight for a couple months until October 1st, 1835 where he had another mishap. While getting in the balloon, he was thrown back off of the balloon, with the balloon still ascending to the sky, left him behind. Having the balloon with an empty basket and no passengers. The next year, May again, came along for him to decide to take a flight once more. So May 1836, he made his flight from Lancaster County over to Harford County in Maryland. He made the journey safely, traveling 75 miles, but when emptying his car, an explosion happened and burned Wise severely. After recovering a year later on September 18, 1837, he once again decided to go back to Philadelphia and make a flight. Unfortunately, things didn't end well. He was flying the balloon and either wind pushed the balloon or there was a leak in the balloon, making the balloon fall into the Delaware River, resulting in a rescue mission for John Wise. Next, in August 1838, Wise decided to have a bit of what you would call an unorthodox experiment with one of his balloons. He decided to blow a hole in it while 13,000 feet in the air. The reason behind this is that he 
decided to make a new invention for the balloon. Since the netting on the balloon was so tightly fixed on the fabric of the balloon, that when it popped, the fabric would gather up the netting, creating a parachute and float down to the ground. Well, his experiment worked. John Wise wrote, When an altitude of about 13,000 feet was attained, the balloon became fearfully expanded to its utmost tension, and, and having but an inch diameter tube in the neck, the gas began to issue through this orifice with considerable noise. I would here observe, however, that any slight sound occurring in so perfectly quiet a place as is that of the balloon a mile or two above the earth makes apparently a great noise. At this period of the voyage, it was evident that unless gas was speedily let off, the balloon must burst from expansion for she was still rising, and the explosive cord being tied rather short, had also become tense and must evidently be tending towards a rupture at the points it passed through the balloon. At this critical moment, I became somewhat excited, and as I looked over the side of my car, I observed the sparkling coruscations of lightning springing from cloud to cloud a mile beneath me as the thunderstorm was passing its last remnants below. The storm was moving from southwest to northeast, and the balloon was sailing from northwest to southeast, passing New Village in a ferry, and I could now see the earth in that direction. I took out my watch, noted on my log book the time 20 minutes past 2, and as I was about returning it to my pocket, thinking at the time whether it were not best to relieve the explosion rope discharge ballast and abandon for the present the idea of this experiment, the balloon exploded. Although my confidence in the success of the contrivance never for a moment forsook me, I must admit that it was a moment of awful suspense. The gas rushed from the rupture in the top of the balloon with a tempestuous noise and in less than 10 seconds not a particle of hydrogen remained in it. The descent at first was rapid and accompanied with a fearfully moaning noise caused by the air rushing through the network and the gas escaping above. In another moment, I felt a slight shock. Looking up to see what caused it, I discovered that the balloon was canning over, being nicely doubled in the lower half into the upper it had fallen, condensing the column of air upon which it was falling until it had arrived at a point where it was so dense that the force of the whole weight pressing down on it was arrested, which caused the parachute to tilt over. In 1855, a young woman named Lucretia Bradley accidentally burst her balloon near Easton, Pennsylvania. She had bought the old balloon a year earlier from John Wise. Like Wise, Bradley survived. A local newspaper called her a brave, enthusiastic, and accomplished Yankee girl. The weight of the car, however, countervailed the tilting tendency, giving it an oscillating motion which it retained until it reached the earth. The velocities of these zigzag descents were marked by corresponding notes of the wind as it whistled through the rigging of the balloon. On reaching the point where the lower current of air traversed the upper, another and more violent shock than the first was the result. From this point, the oscillations became more severe, each one causing a sensation in me similar to that a person experiences when dreaming they fall. The wind from the southwest drifted the machine several miles in its direction before it fell to the earth. As I neared terra firma, all the ballast was thrown overboard, but when I struck, it was with a violent concussion, for the machine was just then at its maximum velocity of descent. The car struck the earth obliquely, and I was thrown about 10 feet forward from it. The balloon had fallen alongside of me and so complete was the collapse where the lower part had doubled into the upper that it was with difficulty separated again. The car had turned bottom upwards and there I stood congratulating myself on the result of this exciting experiment. The perspiration rolling down my forehead in profusion for the atmosphere below felt oppressive. The landing was made on the farm of Mr. Elijah Warren about 10 miles from Easton. Before many minutes had elapsed after this descent, I had resolved to repeat the experiment in Philadelphia at the first opportunity. Then, on May 1842, was one of the biggest highlights of his life. He made one of the biggest discoveries for ballooning and aeronauting, and some would even say for flight. He was making observations of air currents in the sky during a flight going to Bellefonte in Pennsylvania. He noticed that there was a very large air current at high altitude moving west to east. That convinced him that it could be used to transport people across America and perhaps the Atlantic Ocean all the way to the other side of the world. In his journal he wrote, 
It is now beyond a doubt in my mind established that a current from west to east in the atmosphere is constantly in motion within the height of 12,000 feet above the ocean. With this information that John Wise had, he wanted to use it to prove that he could use the current for travel. Well, he needed funding for an expedition to prove that. And where would he go? To Congress.